Okay, I'm going to do this video because if you are a tech, um, this is something you definitely should know, and if you're a beginner, you should learn this. And uh, I'm starting to notice that not everybody does know the mechanical and electrical process of a gearbox, basically, the whole gun. Um, I'm going to open up the same top to basically go over the parts and describe what happens in the phase of everything that goes on. Uh, so, what we need is a motor, for example. This is not the motor that goes to this gun, just a motor, for example. Alright, so you know it's hooked up basically something like this. This is uh, a MOSFETed uh, aim top. So, got your MRF MOSFET here. You hook this up. You hook this up with another wire that go into this MOSFET. And you take this battery here and you hook it up to the MOSFET. When you pull the trigger on uh, full auto, the cutoff lever on the inside moves out of the way so it cannot uh, pull the trolley. Now what that means I'll get into pretty soon, but I want to show what happens inside your gun. So as you pull the trigger, uh, the motor will turn and all that will turn the bevel gear, which will be uh, stopped by an antiversal latch if there's backspin when you let go of the trigger um, or the cycle. Uh, so you have the spur here and the sector here, and the sector pulls back a piston that's on a spring. It hits forward into the cylinder head. Uh, while this happens, the sector gear is rotating with a, a mechanical uh, plate on it that pulls back the tap-up plate right here. That causes the air nozzle to come back. A BB falls into place. Um, because there's pressure of a BB trying to get in there, but it can't. So the air nozzle moves, it, it falls into place, and the air nozzle pushes it forward. By that point, that's when the piston hits, air comes out, BB goes propelled forward. Okay, so let's go over this in depth. All right? If you have a MRF with real active braking, yes, I say with real active braking, because some active, bra af active braking I have seen the Pinion slow down, which is that's not real active braking. Active braking is like that. The pinion's turning and just doesn't matter what voltage it is, it stops instantly. Um, so, if you've seen my video about the electrical process and cutting off with the uh, trigger, you would know that as soon as the sector gear passes the the last tooth of the piston. Uh, it pulls up the cutoff lever at the highest point, pulling the trolley out of the way so it doesn't connect the circuit anymore. There's no more electricity flowing, therefore the motor would stop instantly uh, and you'd be at the front. Your piston would be at the front. I mean, that's active braking, it stops. Um, so basically to, to go over this, you wanna go over, you know, maybe my gun shoots full auto when you're doing semi, the reason is because your cutoff lever is somehow not functioning, not being able to pull the trolley out of the way uh, to stop the process here. So um, I'm going to go ahead and basically the reason I made this video was from Airsoft Mechanics. Uh, I want people to be a good Airsoft technician. I want them to learn. Okay, that's hence why a lot of my videos exist. but. Uh, at the same time, it's showing that, you know, the gearbox is not magical. Show the whole steps. So, basically, here's an example. Alright, you take your motor here, and you assemble your gun, and you adjust the motor height here. Goes up, causes the, the bevel to uh, become pressured, depending on, you know, how this is shimmed up or down and uh, how tight this gets to it, okay? If it gets too tight, it's not gonna stop your electricity from flowing. What stops that is having a cutoff, like your trolley being pulled out of the way. Somehow, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't continue to leave uh, the circuit flowing. Or a fuse, some type of fuse that uh, cuts the um, wiring. So let's say your amperage uh, is pretty high. It's spiked because you have this pressed against this really bad, then that's a possibility. 
Um, it's also a possibility that the trolley is somehow malfunctioning or there is a short somewhere and uh, as you push up the motor in here uh, there's a wire that goes through here and it, it can snag that wire and create a short. Okay, nothing magical. All right, I don't like to hear these weird magical things, okay, like taking your bevel gear, it, it causes it to warp when you do, when you crush this in, which makes your selector plate not work, and, you know, that's the most bogus thing I've ever heard of. Um, so basically, let's go over it on the inside. So what we want to do here is check and see, and you can see there's the cutting down to make the gear rotate without having, uh, without having the gear grind the shell. See, look at that. And at the same time, the aim top gear right here, you can see it's grinded off. That was in one of my videos, Are You Crazy, Zach? Uh, basically, yes, because, you know, when this is grinding in there and to get proper motor height, um, that kind of just pisses you off where you just say, the F these guys, they don't know how to build this crap, you know? I'll just fix it my way and make it actually work properly. So, um... Uh, looking in here, I don't see any issues. Of course, this gun didn't really have any issues other than I said the, the gears just don't sound great. Uh, grease and everything looks good. Okay, so let's go over the process from this point. I'll use this to kind of point things out. Uh, so your motor is going to spin right here, which spins the bevel. And you're going to hear noise from the antiversal latch included through all these gears. Any friction. So you've got the spur rotating the sector. Sector comes, hits this, pulls it back. And once it gets to the end here, there is a lip underneath the sector, which hits the cutoff lever, which I'm going to show right now. So go ahead and lift this up. Just lift it out of the way uh, for now. And if you pull up uh, this spur gear, or excuse me, sector gear right here. There's a tiny little lip right there. Okay? That lip hits this cutoff lever. All right, so we see the cutoff lever right there. When it gets hit, it goes up like this. Let me zoom in here. So when the cutoff lever gets hit, it goes up, which grabs this trolley. So when it does that, it lifts it over the trigger and comes back. That's what the spring on the trolley does. Uh, spring on the trigger makes it so if it does do that and you let go, the trigger falls back automatically to re-grab the trolley. The trolley slips back under the trigger. Okay? When you go to full auto, what happens is the selector plate pulls up the cutoff so that the trolley has no way of being disconnected. Now, when you're in semi, the, click, the cutoff plate will fall underneath the trolley arm, grabbing it. Uh, when you pull the trigger, the sector gear will rotate and hit the cutoff, then grab the trolley out of the way. That's how you stop every semi pull. So, um, right here you can see that, you know, how is it hitting the selector plate? It's not even a, a really good idea. I don't even know where the hell that came from. Uh, yeah, this grease is kind of wet, kind of weird because I don't remember my grease being like that. It doesn't even look like my grease, it looks weird. Um, maybe it's been really cold, wet, who knows. Uh, so that's basically the whole process of how this works. So if something really awkward is going on, if you're shooting semi and you have a selector on semi, it's shooting full auto, more than likely this is not, uh, working properly okay and mechanically here's another thing if your gun's shooting and you hear some back wind of the gears maybe this is not working correctly your antiverse latch but again there's nothing magical here you can see you know everything up to the point um, there's a little cam on the there's a little cam right here that pulls back the uh, tap-up plate to let in the BBs, I mean. Okay, there was uh, one thing I did forget, and I'm going to mention it now, so it's at least in the video. Um, how this functions is the selector plate hits this, and it moves up to block the trigger from moving forward. 
Okay, so if your safety is not working, you would look at something like this. Maybe the selector plate's not hitting this evenly. Maybe it's not s stepping in front of the uh, trigger. Maybe it gets caught. You know, these are things you can look at. Uh, but now that should be everything uh, mechanical, mechanical process. And the electrical process of the um, Airsoft AEG. So I guess this was enough for the video. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and pass me a question. Um, uh, but that's the mechanical and electrical process inside the uh, gearbox. Um, anything else that has to do with the air seal? You have an air seal here, so if you have an air seal inside your uh, barrel and bucking, your BBs will definitely travel down range, especially if the hop up doesn't the hop up uh, mound does not block your BB from going out. Um, so I think that's basically everything covered.